Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus pilot and welcome to episode number two in our series on the Inibuilds A320 Neo. Remember, in this tutorial we make things easy and therefore some of the procedures I'm showing in here are simplified. If you're looking for the full-blown detailed tutorials, I recommend to have a look at my Phoenix A320 tutorials, which are more detailed and tailored to the advanced flight simmer than these on the Inibuilds 320neo, which are more tailored for the easy version. Alright, let's go right into it. In the last tutorial we set up the entire aircraft with the exception of the flight management computer and this is what we are going to deal with right now. So let's go into the FMC setup. Now we start right down here, the FMC is open on the status page and the status page basically tells us the engine version that is installed, the navigation database that is installed and the um, idle and performance factors, which we can ignore for the simulator purposes. Now, we are going to start on the init page, so press the init button over here. We are going to do a flight plan initialization request, and in order to be able to do that, you first need to link your SimBrief account in the electronic flight bag. So if you have not done that yet, then please do it now. You can do that under options and then up here on the SimBrief pilot ID you enter your ID. You can see that I've entered mine over here, but you need to enter your own. And remember that in order to be able to do the flight plan uplink, you need to have created your flight plan through the link that I have included in the video description below. A free Navigraph account is necessary for that in order to use SimBrief. However, the A320 is such a highly automated aircraft that I can really recommend you to check that out. Okay, so with our SimBrief ID entered, we press the init request button and this is going to automatically uplink our SimBrief flight plan into the FMC. Now, when that is done, all we need to do is clear the scratchpad from any messages there might be and then we just enter the um, flight number next. So today we will be Eurowings to Papa Whiskey and our cost index is going to be 30. When the flight plan initialization is done, we move on to the flight plan page where we select our departure. So you can see Lokdo is our first waypoint. So click the line select key next to our departure airport Berlin, then you can click on to departure, select our runway which will be 25 left, and now we are going to select our departure which is going to be the locked door to November departure. When that is selected we verify our entry on the top over here where we got runway 25 left, locked door to November, and then we press the insert button. Likewise, we are going to enter our arrival in Cologne by clicking the line select key next to the destination and then we will find the arrival menu on the top right. From there, we are going to enter the ILS approach Rome 24 and we are going to approach via the Copac 24 transition. So let's scroll down until we can find that transition and here it is, Copac 24. So you can see, now we've selected ILS Rome 24, no via and the Copac 24 transition. Press insert and now we are going to check that everything we entered actually does make sense. So select the plan mode on the navigation display and select the constraint key so that you can see any flight plan constraint down here on your navigation display. Now with those entries done we can go ahead and check our flight plan. When you are on the flight plan page like this, you can use the up and down arrow keys to scroll through the flight plan. Now, the up key is used to scroll down. Welcome to French logic. Basically, it moves everything a step up in the plan, and that's what they thought. So, let's use the up key to scroll through the flight plan and make sure that everything we see in here does make sense, that there are no disconnected lines, and basically that everything we have in here matches what we want to have. So for example what we see over here, this is exactly the type of issue we are looking for when scrolling through the flight plan. When we look over here you can see that we have the waypoint Kukit twice and that there is a waypoint in between. So let's go ahead and clear that. The real Airbus should have done that automatically by the way. So let's clear that out by removing the double Kukit 
and the CI24. And finally, we're going to remove the discontinuity that we have just created. So now you can see that the routing is looking fine. And by scrolling further down, we can also check the missed approach routing already, which we have in here. And that is our flight plan completely checked. Next up, we go down to the secondary flight plan and we press copy active in order to make a backup copy of our flight plan. Next, we can move to the navigation radio page, but we don't really need to tune anything here because the A320 is certified to fly completely on area navigation, aka you can rely completely on the FMS to navigate you and you don't need to use any conventional backups. Next we go to the progress page and we enter our departure runway down here, so that is going to be Echo Delta Delta Bravo Berlin to 5 left and we enter that in here. Now with this we are done with the lateral part of our flight plan. In order to do the vertical part, so the performance part, we first need to initialize our weights and we can do that on the init page. So go to init, go to next page with the arrow pointing to the right down here and then we can set this one up very quickly. Without any weights entered, we simply press the line select key next to it and the aircraft will automatically import the weights that we have currently loaded in our aircraft. Note that this requires that we have previously loaded the airplane already through the payload tab on the electronic flight bag. With this done, we just need to enter our block fuel and the block fuel equals the amount of fuel that we plan to carry on the flight. So we have loaded 4200 kilograms, so we are going to enter 4.2 and put that in the block fuel field. And this basically initializes all the weights for the airplane and we are now going to check on the bottom right of the page that we do see some extra fuel and extra time calculated down here. Basically the airplane now calculates the entire flight and it determines that we are going to arrive with 1200 kilograms more fuel than the minimum that you can see on the bottom left over here and that equals 15 minutes of flying time. Now finally, to finish our FMS setup, we're going to move on to the performance page. Over here, we can import the performance that we have previously calculated. You can do that through the takeoff field down here on the electronic flight bag. And with all our performance already calculated, as we have done in the first part of the tutorial, all we need to do is click send to FMGS. Now we can see the data has been sent to our FMGS. And when we now look down here, we can see that we have got that data uplink. Click confirm takeoff data and now the most important data has been uplinked. The only data that we still need to enter is the flap setting and the trimmable horizontal stabilizer setting, basically our takeoff trim. So let's go ahead and have a look at what that is going to be. We can find that data down here on the performance part by first of all going down to the THS value which is 0.4 up and finally, we can see our flap setting located up here, which is configuration 1 plus F. Okay, so what we do is we enter 1 slash up 0 0.4 and insert that on the line over here. And this basically concludes the setup of our FMS. Now, as mentioned, take note of any scratch pad message you may get and thereafter clear them out. A final word here on our setup. You can see that we have the thrust reduction and acceleration altitude fields down here. Those can be customized by the pilots, like most of the other fields on the page. But those over here are especially important. Why is that? That is because we need to decide which noise abatement departure procedure we want to fly. You can see by default we have values over here which are 1000 feet above the airfield elevation. Now. Thrust reduction and acceleration at 1000 feet above the airfield elevation basically is called noise abatement procedure number 2. There is also a noise abatement procedure number 1 available. Noise abatement procedure number 1 also comes with a thrust reduction at 1000 feet above the field elevation, but an acceleration 3000 feet above the field elevation. Now, Noise abatement procedure number two is used in order to minimize the footprint of the noise 
far away from the airport. While noise abatement procedure number one is used to minimize the footprint of the noise close to the airport. With noise abatement procedure number one, since you accelerate later, you climb steeper and therefore it gets a little bit quieter, closer to the airport. However, further away from the airport, you are going to be a little bit lower because you are climbing with the flaps extended and therefore with more drag for a longer time. That means that if you want to use noise abatement procedure number one, you will create or you will create less noise close to the airport, more noise far away from the airport. Noise abatement procedure number two, which is the default one you see in here, you create more noise close to the airport, but less noise further away. All right. So up to you to decide which one to use. In the real world, they are mostly using noise abatement procedure number one in Berlin. That means we could update this by typing slash 3150 in order to update the acceleration altitude. Now, for today's tutorial, we will simply leave it as it is in here and we'll just leave it at that. I just wanted to mention that these two possibilities exist and it provides for a great little change every now and then to use a different procedure. So this concludes our FMS setup. I hope that you found this one interesting. The final thing that we just got to do after our FMS has been inserted is to set up the glare shield panel. So we're going to enter our first cleared altitude, so our initial climb in here. And in the absence of any restrictions, we can simply dial this one up all the way to our cruising altitude already, which is going to be 34,000 feet. Last but not least, we're going to set up our navigation display, and we do that on the EFIS control panel. So first of all, we set up the QNH, which is 1010 today. And then we go to the arc view with a range of 10 nautical miles. We select the constraint button up here. And finally, we are going to display the VORs on both sides using the selectors down here. Well, and this finishes our setup of the FMS together with our flight control unit and the electronic flight instrument system. Now, with all of those set up, all I can say is thank you very much for watching. On the next one, we are going to start up our engines and taxi out to the runway. So do let me know if you like this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, be sure to like, comment and subscribe if you're up for more. And finally, if you really like what I'm doing, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you for watching and see you all again on the next one.